People say that ChatGPT can literally give you the answer to practically anything. So I thought I would test it out by seeing if ChatGPT could create the perfect Pokemon team. I decided to do Fire Red because, let's be honest, it's probably the most popular Pokemon game. Anyway, I went into ChatGPT and simply asked, what is the best team for Pokemon for Fire Red? First Pokemon it recommended to me was, unsurprisingly, Charizard. Like, let's be honest, why Charizard? He's not even the best starter by a long shot. But I guess I got picked because he's a little more popular, but whatever. The genius moveset that it came up with was Flamethrower and Fly. Now I'm starting to see why he was picked. We needed a flyer. There is, of course, a very limited amount of flying types in this gen, and of course this moveset is amazing, so obviously it is the right choice. My bad. The next Pokemon was Pikachu and Raichu. I don't know why they included both. I guess because Pikachu is really popular, but anyway. Great choice. We get it really early on. It's a solid electric one. The moveset is also just astounding. It only gave us Thunderbolt. It's a really good move, and it knows this because it was the only move it gave us, so obviously we don't need any other moves. Do you know what I was just saying about the lack of flying types in this generation? What does it do? It goes ahead and gives us another flying type, because why not? Anyway, it gives us a Gyarados, which isn't actually that bad, as long as it gives us a pretty decent moveset, and I think we should be... Oh. Oh no. Oh no! Wow, what a great moveset. The Hydro Pump is good, really strong, and Dragon Rage, it's useful. Um, anyway, the next one they gave us is Alakazam. The moves it gave us was Psychic, not too bad, and Thunder Wave. Don't know why he decided to give this to Alakazam and not Raichu, but clearly he knows something I don't. Next, they pick out the very solid normal type Pokemon, Snorlax. Again, a really great Mon. You don't get him too late, and his stats are really good. The move... That's right, move it gave us was Body Slam. A great move, but I'm not sure why it only gave us one. All I can really say is it must know how good of a move it is if it's the only move they gave me. Last but not least is Executor. Okay, maybe this is Lee. Um, w wow, what a great mon. We need a Grass type and another Psychic type. <clears throat> Uh, anyway, the moves it gives us is surprising. They actually give us more than two moves this time. They gave us three. Solar Beam? Yeah, okay, not bad. Psychic? Yeah, that's not surprising. And Sleep Powder? A good move. Only problem is we won't be able to outspeed anything to use it, but whatever. Anyway, now that we have the team finally set up, it's time for us to actually play the game. I named myself Yotman, and I didn't know what to name my rival, so I asked ChatGPT, and the first result was Shadow, so I guess that's what I'll go with. Next, I picked Charmander because that's what they told me to get. Not much to say there. I also wanted to make this a little interesting and ask what name they wanted to give my Pokemon, so I asked, what should I name my Charmander? Again, ChatGPT likes picking the most boring and straightforward answers, so it comes up with Blaze. Wow! Never heard that one before. I then pick up Pikachu from Dean Forest, which, by the way, didn't take as long as I thought it would. I found it only after like three encounters. Anyway, the name it decides on is Sparky. Again, a very original name. Unfortunately, all the moves that ChatGPT gave me are too good to get early on, so I have to use all these useless moves until I can get the good ones. I also decided to play on set mode, and I wasn't allowed to heal in battle, because let's be honest, it's kind of cheating. I then fight all the trainers in the forest and decide to take on Brock at level 13. Obviously, since ChatGPT meticulously picked out this team, I will win every- Oh, and there goes my entire team. Well... Uh... Once I get my Charmander to a Charmeleon, I'm ready to take on Brock, and as you would expect, it's pretty easy. BAM! First badge down. I then take on the Trainers East of Peter City, which, now I think about it, it's not really a city. There's like, what, four buildings? Anyway, then I purchase a Magikarp from the Magikarp selling guy? For a very fair $500, and ChatGPT thinks of the genius name, Splashy. Splashy? Wh what? Well, it, it's a name. I decided to switch train it because unfortunately before it evolves it kinda sucks. We blast our way through Mount Moon and make it to the Cerulean where we take on the rival and obviously he's gonna be a piece of cake, right? Well no, because we proceed to miss two mega kicks against the Squirtle because of course we do, and we have to try all over again. Thankfully, we beat him second try, and we proceed to fight all the trainers north of Cerulean. After that, Bill gives us the SSN ticket, and we make our way to Vermilion. Once we fight all the trainers down there, we head to Missy's gym. 
After losing a couple times, I decided to grind Pikachu to level 20, where hopefully he'll be able to do enough damage, except it didn't really matter because Tremulian ended up sweeping anyway. Three Mega Kicks to the face. That's all it took. <sighs> Why does this stuff happen to me? Next, we take on SSN, and by everyone, and yes, even the rival fight was a joke. And after spending 27 decades at Surge's gym, trying to figure out the gym puzzle, we finally make it to him, where we proceed to just absolutely obliterate him first try. Shortly after, we finally get Splash to evolve into a Gyarados, which honestly, switch training him wasn't that bad. Like, at least not as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, next, we did Rock Tunnel and a whole lot more trainers. Nothing interesting there. Once we get to Lavender Town, we head straight to Celadon, where we can buy our next member, Abra. ChatGPT got really creative with this name, deciding to name it Houdini, even though it's a girl. Whatever, it's, it's, it's my fault. I didn't say the gender, so I can't really blame it on that one. Next, I give it the TM for Psychic, so that it's actually useful. Then I proceed to train it as I do the Rocket Hideout. Abra evolves into Kadabra, then we take on Giovanni, which again, was a pushover. Next, I buy a Thunderstone for Sparky, because I literally just forgot. We get him involved in Raichu, and he has the only move that he will ever need, Thunderbolt, so he's pretty much completely set up. Next, we take on Erika, who's really easy because she uses Grass and Poison types, and I have a Fire and a Psychic type, so I pretty much just one-shot everything. We then evolve our Charmeleon, who has Flamethrower and Fly now, so that is another Pokemon complete. We then head to the Pokemon Tower, where everyone in it, including the rival, just got swept with Raichu and Kadabra. Once we complete that, we get our next team member, Snorlax, with our newly acquired Pokeflu. When I asked what name I should give it, it said Biggie. Wait, what are those alarm bells? Oh, that's right. We have confirmed that ChatGBT is fat phobic. That's right, absolute scum of the earth. We then train until it learns Body Slam, which again is the only move it can use from now on. 20 minutes or so go by with nothing interesting happening, just a lot, and I mean a lot, of trainer battles. We then make it to Safari Zone where we catch our final Pokemon, Execute, and Honesty time, I already used the TM for Psychic on Kadabra, so I couldn't teach it to execute, meaning the only moves it could now use are Solar Beam Sleep Powder, so... Uh, anyway, ChatGPT decided to name our bundle of eggs Sunny, which, to be honest, is pretty original. I mean, I never would have thought of that, I probably would. Next, we take on Koga, who was surprisingly easy. And I say surprisingly easy, because Koga normally gives me a hard time, but this was weird, because I didn't even need to use Kadabra. Charizard and Gyarados just handled their own. Once Execute learned Sleep Powder, we evolved it into Executor and then moved on. After completely sweeping Silphco for items and trainers, we then move on to Sabrina's Gym, which again, was really easy. After we evolve our Kadabra and Alakazam, which yes, I made it so that we evolve via level up instead of trading it, but I don't really care. Feel free to type in hate comments letting me know how much you disagree. Anyway, more boring stuff happens, we do send up our mansion, defeat Blaine, completely ignore Bill, fight and defeat Giovanni, destroy our rival, go through Victory Road, and BAM! We're finally at the Elite Four. First up was Lorelei, who was not too bad since we had a Raichu. Executor dies the first turn, of course, so we go up to Raichu and delete her Dugong and Cloyster, but then comes out Slowbro, who is an actual tank, and kills our Raichu in the process. We then send out our Charizard, because why not, and instantly die from Surf. Luckily, Snorlax is able to take it out, but then dies the next turn to Lapras. She then proceeds to decimate our team, and we have to try again. But honestly, we got really close. After losing again, we finally were able to beat her with our Snorlax and win within only three attempts. We move on to Bruno, and I don't really need to explain the fight. Literally, just watch the footage for yourself. It It's pretty self-explanatory. Next is Agatha, and I try to sweep with Alakazam because why not? But of course, we run out of Psychic PP, and that wasn't going to work. Luckily, we were able to finish her off with Raichu and Charizard for a fairly easy first try. Man, all these Elite Four members are kind of a joke. Lance should be pretty- oh, and it, okay, it's pretty tough. Yeah, for some reason, Lance just absolutely walled us with his Dragonite, and of course its Aerodactyl outsped Alakazam, so it took us about 10 tries or so. On our winning attempt, we one-shot the Gyarados with Raichu, then he switches to Dragonair. We switch up to Executor, who gets brutally homicided, and go out to Charizard. It takes out our Charizard, but not before we severely weaken down the Dragonair. Snorlax is then able to carry until we get to his Dragonite, where it shuts us down pretty quickly. We then head out to Raichu, where I try to go for the Paralysis, and we actually do get it while also getting him down to half health before taking us out. Alakazam is then able to defeat the Dragonite, and do about half to the Aerodactyl before murdering us. Luckily, Gyarados was able to tank an Ancient Power and finish it off with Hydro Pump, getting us the win. Now that we have the hardest fight out of the way, let's destroy the champion and make it to the Hall of Fame, and oops, never mind, it's impossible. No, but seriously, this fight took me so long. I fought him over and over and over again until I eventually gave up. 
What we're seeing now is all the attempts mega sped up. Eventually I realized I needed to grind a little bit if I was going to win. Eventually I got my team up to the late 40s, early 50s ish and was able to make it back. This time it took a big, ginormous, massive one. It took, it, it took one attempt. I'm struggling on it for so long, of course all I needed was a few extra levels. Anyway, on the winning attempt, I take out a Pidgeot with Raichu while taking a hit from Air Lace in the process. No surprise there. Next he sends out his right on, so I switch to Gyarados and he goes for Earthquake, which obviously didn't hit me. I then am able to land in one shot with Hydro Pump. Next he sends out his Alakazam, who I just spam with Dragon Rage until I faint. Snorlax is able to finish it off, but not before taking a massive Psychic in the process. He sends out his own Executor next, who I'm able to finish off with Snorlax with just 3 HP left. He sends out his Arcanine, who finishes me off with extreme speed. Not really knowing who to go out to, I send out Raichu and hope for the Paralysis. I land a Thunderbolt, which unfortunately doesn't paralyze him, but he does get paralyzed because of Raichu's static when he goes for extreme speed. I send out our Alakazam, who almost finished him off with Psychic and takes a massive flamethrower to the face. He then uses a full restore and I go for Psychic again and I get very lucky and land a crit. Last but not least, he sends out his Blastoise, which I use Thunder Wave and hope he doesn't hit me. Luckily he misses Hydro Pump, which definitely would have knocked me out if it hit. I go for Psychic and unfortunately he does land Hydro Pump this turn and takes a Houdini. I send out my Executor and since he's paralyzed, I am able to outspeed and finish him off with Solar Beam. Oh. My. Gosh. It. Actually is over. It wasn't bad at first, but those last two fights took me so long. Probably about like a third of the run. The question is answered. I can beat Pokemon Fire Red using ChatGPT. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. If you guys have any suggestions on what you want me to do with ChatGPT next, just let me know. Also, let me know if you want me to try this again with any other games. Not only Pokemon necessarily, but whatever else you might think of. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.